Rav Masechet Brachot says, a dream can be, not always, but can be one sixtieth of prophecy. What's prophecy? There are several aspects of prophecy. But one aspect of prophecy is that it's talking to God. Meaning it's knowing a little bit of a secret that God is trying to tell you about something that's happening or could happen in the future. So, dreams can be a way that Hashem will communicate to you to tell you about something that could potentially happen in the future. Either to warn you about it, either to warn you about it, or to make you happy about it. So the Shulchan Aruch says, there's a certain dream, most dreams are complete nonsense. Most dreams are just a figment of your imagination. You went to the zoo, you saw an elephant, then later on you had a hot dog and you know, for lunch, and then later on you read a book. So you went to sleep and you dreamt that the book is eating a hot dog but it has an elephant head on it. That's just a figment of your imagination. There's no, nothing there. Most dreams are complete nonsense. But sometimes dreams do mean something. And the Gemara says that they have to follow a certain pattern. If you have a recurring dream, you have the same exact dream multiple times. Chabot, <laughs> Chabot, right here, this says, please, please, please. If you're having a recurring dream, you're having a recurring dream, then that's a dream to pay attention to. That's a dream to pay attention to. If you had a one-time dream, more times than not, it's complete nonsense. But if you have a recurring dream, yeah, it's something that you dreamt. Let's say, for example, you dreamt of chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom, lo aleinu lo alechem, you dreamt of a car accident. <coughs> Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It just means maybe you have anxiety about your driving skills. But now, if you had that same dream two or three times, that's something to pay attention to. You have to go to a Talmud Chacham and ask that Talmud Chacham that you know, and you know that that Talmud Chacham cares about you, to tell you, what does this dream mean? Talmud Chacham is somebody who learns Torah all the time. Not just somebody who learns Torah once in a blue moon. Somebody who knows Torah. But also has to be, should be somebody that cares about you. Because the Gemara says, if that person cares about you, and he's a Talmud Chacham, he will give you positive translation of that dream which also has an effect on the dream itself but if you have a certain type of dream the Shulchan Aruch says that's called a dangerous dream there's a, da- there's a type of dream that's called dangerous what's a dangerous dream if you dream that you lost all your teeth sometimes people have this dream I already know a couple of people that had this dream and one of my students actually heard this I said this in a different lecture maybe it was with you guys maybe with somebody else and uh, I said, the Shulchan Aruch says, if you had a dream that you lost all your teeth, Shulchan Aruch says you have to fast. You have to fast the next day. Really serious fast. No eating, no drinking. Why? It's a very bad sign from heaven that somebody could potentially die, including Chaz Shalom, the person himself. It's a sign that that person needs to do some serious tshuva, some serious act of Kedusha in order to undo this dream. One of my students saw me saying this, heard me say this in a different shiul, and says, I can't believe it. I had a dream a year ago that my teeth fell, but I didn't think much of it. I didn't think much of it. He says a week later, one of his family members died. Rabotai, dreams have a meaning sometimes. Last but not least about dreams is that dreams are one of the ways that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you joy in this world. Because dreams, when they're good, they're enjoyable. Now do you dream that you fly, it's cool to fly. Because you feel like it's real. It's a dream. In the dream, it's real. So it's cool to fly, it's cool to do all types of things. So dreams are a way for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to give you some type of joy, so much so that if you do not dream for an extended period of time, I believe it's 40 days, then you should take some action to do tshuva. Why? Because that means that there's a kitrug, there's a case against you in heaven where Hashem is lowering your joy. Last but not least, I'm sorry, I forgot. Dreams is also a way for the Satan's wife to make guys lose their olamaba. How so? The Satan's wife is so powerful, she's more powerful than him that we're not allowed to say her name. If you know it, keep it to yourself, please. If you don't know it, it's better you don't know it. Because if you say her name, 
it, you're inviting her over. Now, the problem is that when she comes into your dream, she doesn't look like the Satan's wife. She looks like somebody you like. She likes. She looks like somebody you want to like. And she wants to do everything rotten in your mind in order to get you to waste seed. Now, when a guy wastes seed in his dream, even though it's not an intentional sin like he did it when he was awake, nonetheless, it is still considered a sin. Where do we learn it from? Gemara Masechet Avodah Zarah says a man should be careful of the things that he sees in the morning so evil does not come to him at night. What's evil? Gemara says evil is the Satan's wife trying to entice him to waste seed while he's sleeping. We call it in linger in the street language uh, wet dream. He wastes seed and Rabotai Karim when he's wasting seed he is creating millions and millions of demons that are going to torture him as much as they possibly can. Not a good idea, which means that a person needs to follow a certain regiment when he's sleeping to sleep on his left side. If he sees a woman in his, in his uh, dream to make sure if he can, and he's trained himself to wake himself up, even if the woman in his dream is his wife, it's still not his wife, it's always the Satan's wife. Point being, Abu Tai, the dreams have a lot of meaning. A lot of meaning we actually can speak hours about dreams, but this gives you a little bit of a synopsis of what they are. Chavod, next question. Yes. Before uh, uh, Shlomo Hamedek, was there a, a prayer similar to Kiryat Shema? Kiryat Shema is from the Torah. And what about the part where it's like, Shani Shlomo Shishim Divorim Saviv Zah? Oh, no, that's Shema Lamita. That's Shema Lamita. The Kriyat Shema itself is our verses from the Torah itself. Originally from Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, Shema Yisrael. Yaakov Avinu, Shema Yisrael. Then later on in the Torah it's mentioned again as the commandment for us to say Shema Yisrael every day. Men are obligated to say Shema Yisrael no less than twice per day. One in the morning during Shachrit. One at night during Arvit. They should also say Shema Yisrael before they go to sleep. That's called Shema Alamita. And women are obligated to say Shema Yisrael at least once per day at no particular time. They don't have to do it in the morning. They don't have to do it at night. They just have to do it at some point. Just like they have to pray Amida once per day as well. But they should also say Shema Alamita. What's Shema Alamita? Shema Alamita is saying Shema Yisrael and reading a Nusach, a certain uh, regimen of prayer that uh, compiles some things from Shlomo HaMelech, some things from David HaMelech, and so on, compiles these prayers along with the Shema Yisrael. Why do you say it? Because as we said, you're going to fall asleep. When you fall asleep, you lose control of a lot of things. And the Gemara says that when a person falls asleep, it's partial death. It's one sixtieth of death. And during that time, that neshama gets to see things it cannot see in this world. If it wants protection from some of those things that are not good, you should reach my Israel before you go to sleep. Why? Because then, if you reach my Israel before you go to sleep, then if you say with kavanah, not just say it like a robot, say it with kavanah, with real meaning, then you're going to get yourself protection during your dreams even. During your dreams even, so... The Satan's wife doesn't show up in your dream, that no one shows up in your dream, and even if you have night terrors or night dream, uh, uh, nightmares, Shema Yisrael protects you from those things. So Shema Yisrael is definitely an uh, obligation for all Jews, but as far as Shema Lamita, that's the third. In, in the level of, let's say, significance, there's the obligation for men, like I said, morning and night, women once a day, regardless of when it is, but then there's the Shema Lamita, which is to say Shema Yisrael before you go to sleep. If you're extraordinarily tired, like sometimes happens to me, and you're so tired that you know you're not going to be able to read the entire Shema Yisrael al mita Like the Shema Yisrael itself is relatively short. But the Shema al mita is kind of long. It's kind of long. If you're just one of those times where pretty much you know that there's just no way you're going to survive with this prayer, at the very least, do the Shema Yisrael, minimum. Don't make this that this is the standard. You should do more. Because the more you do, the more protection you have. Shlomo HaMelech, 
because he was afraid of what would happen to him during his dream, he literally had guards surrounding his bed. Like it says in a song. He had guards surrounding his bed. That's how dangerous dreams can be for some people that are very, very holy. So much so that his father, David Melech, never slept more than 15 minutes. Never slept more than 15 minutes consecutively. It's not necessarily because he didn't want to sleep. It's because he was so scared of what would happen if he slept for an extended period of time, Chazal says. The Gaon Vilna also. A lot of the Tzadikim sleep for very, very short periods of time, not just because they want to be productive during the day, but also because they don't want to lose control of themselves, their bodies, for an extended period of time and be subject to what could potentially happen. Don't worry, this is not going to be a problem for you. We're not Shlomo Amelech, but nonetheless, we do need to do Shema Yisrael before we go to sleep. Next question. Chavod in the black...